Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. While global technology observers are still discussing when China can break through the 7 nanometer chip process, a report from the International Semiconductor Association in March revealed a more noteworthy trend. China's mature process chip production capacity has accounted for 28% of the world, and even more shockingly, this figure will exceed 39% in 2027. This means that one out of every three traditional chips is labeled made in China. This battlefield, ignored by the outside world, is staging a silent revolution that quietly changes the global industrial chain. Back in 2018, the US's chip supply cut to ZTE was like a thunderbolt, opening the prelude to the Sino-US technology war. At that time, China's chip self-sufficiency rate was less than 20%, and high-end chips were almost entirely dependent on imports. However, it was this next duck crisis that gave birth to the world's largest chip replacement plan. Data shows that in 2023, China's semiconductor equipment procurement will surpass South Korea for the first time, reaching a staggering 42 billion US dollars, of which 70% of the funds will flow to the construction of production lines with 28 nanometers and above processes. This seemingly conservative choice is actually based on shrewd calculations of the global market. In the current global chip market, mature processes still account for 83% of the market share. From temperature control chips in refrigerators to ECU controllers in cars, 28 nanometer processes can fully meet the needs. In this industrial transformation, Chinese companies have demonstrated unique Chinese style innovation. When the United States banned ASML from selling EUV lithography machines to China, engineers at SMIC maximized the potential of DUV lithography machines. Through multiple exposure technology, 28 nanometer equipment was used to mass produce 14 nanometer chips with a yield rate of 92%. This homemade steelmaking breakthrough has given new life to imported equipment originally worth $120 million on Chinese production lines. What is even more surprising is that Chinese manufacturers have cut the cost of silicon carbide wafers to $500 per piece, which is only one-third of similar products in the United States, directly leading to a reshuffle of the global power device market. The advantage on the market side may be the winner of this contest. 70% of the batteries and 60% of the motor controllers for new energy vehicles in the world are produced in China, and these components require a large number of IGBT chips. Six out of every 10 smartphones in the world are assembled in China, and these devices are equipped with hundreds of mature process chips. When Texas Instruments moved its analog chip production line to Zhuhai, and when Infineon expanded its third-generation semiconductor base in Wuxi, these actions all confirmed the fact that chip companies that lost the Chinese market are like fish out of water. American policymakers are obviously aware of the seriousness of the problem. From the small courtyard and high walls of the Biden administration to Trump's threat to impose tariffs, the policy toolbox is close to bottoming out. But the actual data gave them a slap in the face. China's chip exports increased from 550 billion yuan in 2018 to 1 trillion yuan in 2024, and the trade war has accelerated domestic substitution. Even more ironic, is that the chip inventory backlog in the United States exceeds 3.3 billion US dollars, while the order schedule for China's automotive grade chips has been scheduled until 2026. This situation of ice and fire reflects the deep fission of the global industrial chain. In this game, Chinese companies have demonstrated amazing industrial chain integration capabilities. When Japan restricted the export of photoresist, Chinese chemical companies achieved mass production of KRF photoresist within half a year. When the United States cut off the supply of EDA software, Huawei and domestic manufacturers developed a full process tool chain for 14 nanometer technology. This strategy has enabled the domestic equipment replacement rate in mature process fields to exceed 
Even the Semiconductor Association of the United States has to admit that China has formed an unshakable cost advantage in subsectors such as power semiconductors and sensor chips. In cutting-edge fields below 5 nanometers, China still has obvious shortcomings. The transistor density of TSMC's 3 nanometer chip reached 291 million per square millimeter, while SMIC's most advanced process is still at 7 nanometers. However, the industrial rules are changing, with the rise of new scenarios such as smart cars and industrial internet, the growth rate of demand for advanced processes has dropped from 25% in 2019 to 12% in 2023. On the other hand, the mature process market, benefiting from the explosion of IoT devices, has maintained an annual compound growth rate of more than 18%. This trend of one rising and the other falling has won China a valuable strategic buffer period. When the United States considers imposing tariffs on mature process chips, it may have overlooked a basic fact. 70% of the quartz components needed for global semiconductor equipment manufacturing come from China, and 65% of high-purity graphite, a key consumable for silicon wafer production, is produced in Inner Mongolia. This deeply nested industrial chain relationship makes any unilateral sanctions like a seven-injury punch that hurts others and oneself. TSMC founder Morris Chang said, the semiconductor industry has long transcended national boundaries. Attempting to divide the market by political means will only accelerate the spread of technology in the end. China's 12-inch wafer fabs in Hefei, Wuhan and other places have been put into production one after another, and the estimated new production capacity is equivalent to 18% of the world's existing production capacity and 40% of the $52.7 billion in subsidies promised by the U.S. Chips and Science Act has not yet been implemented. This gap in execution can be seen in the story of Jingha Integrated taking 35% of the global CMOS image sensor market share with 28 nanometers process. When the opponent was still struggling with technology blockade, Chinese manufacturers had conquered the supply chain of Sony, and Samsung with cost-effectiveness. The final victory or defeat of this war without gunpowder may not depend on the most cutting-edge technological breakthroughs, but on who can better meet the real market demand. Just like the rise of Japan's semiconductor industry with memory and the counterattack of South Korea with panel chips, China is taking a unique path of surrounding the city with the countryside. When American engineers were still debugging the 2 nanometers process in the laboratory, the 28 nanometers chips of Chinese factories had been installed in Tesla's charging piles, Siemens inverters, and even Boeing's black boxes. This kind of feedback from the application end may be the most solid foundation for chip autonomy. 20 years ago, no one believed that China could build high-speed rail. 10 years ago, no one expected Huawei to become a 5G leader. Today, when China's mature process chips are sweeping the world, the once unattainable chip power dream is shining into reality in another way. This is not a zero-sum game of either this or that, but a profound revelation about industrial laws and innovation paths. In the era of globalization, the real technological barriers are never the parameters in the laboratory but the close fit of each link in the industrial chain and the precise match between market demand and technology supply.